something like 85% or more of the school boards in the state representing something like 90% or more of the students enrolled have passed resolutions against uh, uh, testing in one form or another. Uh, you all put the pause button on the 15% rule earlier this year, but nobody thinks the problem is solved. Right. And there continues to be a lot of uh, angst about the, the cost, about the days dedicated in the classroom to the test, and about whether the number of tests is the right number of tests. Uh, uh, what should we do? What have we done wrong on this? Can, can you defend the system as it currently exists? Do you want to defend it? Or, and if not, what do you think it ought to become? Well, let's say I'm going to defend the system. I'm going to say that the system that the legislature developed yeah. is one that got us to the point where we could have at least some bragging rights as it relates to some of our subgroups, particularly African Americans and Hispanics. Does it need some degree of modification? I'll accept that. And where is that degree of modification? It seems to me that we ought to maintain, for the most part, the four by four. And then, so where do we find modifications within that? It says that maybe we don't require a two, algebra two. Maybe a youngster who wants to be in the construction business takes construction geometry. Maybe a youngster who is interested in going into another field takes aviation. Maybe so we create, and I've asked superintendents to submit to me a series of math and science courses that have rigor that can substitute for the third and fourth year of math and science that I can submit to the State Board of Education because they have the authority to approve those yep. courses. Yep. Um, do we need 15 tests? Maybe the answer is somewhere between 6 and 12. But it seems to me that a youngster ought to have to pass a test, uh, pass the English two and three, ought to have to pass algebra one and geo, ought to have to pass bio and chem, ought to have to pass uh, American history to be able to graduate from a Texas school and to move on to, to work in college. Are you at all sympathetic, Commissioner, to the question of whether too much time is being devoted in class to teaching Very much for so. the test? Very much so, but let me, let me, let, let me tell you how, how I parse that. Yeah. Part of what's happening, and let's talk about the test, there are the end of course exams, yeah. and then there's all the benchmark tests, the worksheet tests, the learning how to fill in the, the, the bubble, all of that test, that's local. State law basically says that you cannot have um, tests more than 10% of the school year. All that other testing is done by local, uh, local school districts. And I have to admit that I've been advised by a former commissioner who said that any superintendent in the midst of high stakes testing that doesn't make sure that his youngsters know what they need to know by the day test comes, is not worth his salt and is a fool, and that's why they do all the additional. But all that additional testing is done by them. But here's, here's where we're going to go. I would ask everybody, pump your brakes, slow your roll. We're only in the second year of STAR testing, and there's going to come a time, just as it did with TOS and TOX, where there is a level of confidence that the TEKS developed by the State Board of Education, that the curriculum that's been developed, and that the tests are all aligned. And all you got to do is teach the curriculum. And if you teach the curriculum, it'll be all right. We're only in the second year. And because of the second year and the, and the, and, and, and the concern about we don't know, that's why we've got all this other stuff going on. But we'll get to that point if we give it some time. And I, I realize that there are youngsters who are in the middle of this process right now. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. And that's the reason why we've tried to take some of the pressure out of the balloon. Right. That's why we took the pressure off to 15%. To take some of the pressure out of the balloon. But of course, that was a short term, was a short -term fix. But the legislature, had, Evan, the legislature right. was short term, but come on. On the 15%. On the 15%. The, the legislature 
is going to address that issue right. in the next 140 days. And before I had my conversation with the governor regarding this position, I watched the tape of the House Public Ed uh, Committee hearing, and I didn't see a whole lot of um, gumption for to, to, to continue 15 percent. So 15 percent right. probably is not going to stay so, here. So your, your position, Commissioner, then on this issue, as on vouchers and choices, that the 181 are going to decide. And if the 181 decide to completely upturn the apple cart on this testing regime, you're going to be fine to go along with it. No, well, hold up, hold up, hold up. On this one's a little bit different now. I think it's really important for us to maintain fidelity to what we've begun. I believe that the increased rigor that we have in STAR is important for our youngsters. I believe that it's important for our youngsters to take those end of course exams in language arts in second, yeah. two and three, yeah. algebra one and geometry. Yeah. And you will see me walk in the halls. So on this issue, you, you will take a position on this issue. Well, on this, yeah. But not on the yeah, other. This is what I. Vouchers is not, that's them. That's them. That's this them. Is, this is, this is, this is me.